Hey guys, it's Melanie. Happy Friday. Welcome to another Friday Favorites and Flops. I hope you all had a really good week. I've had a pretty good week myself. It has been mostly spent on preparing tax stuff because it is tis the season, right? Um, this is the one part about being self-employed that I absolutely hate. Um, so <laughs> I had to spend hours this week, like going through and doing all of my mileage and like, uh, it's just putting everything into like QuickBooks. I, <laughs> I should. And every year when this happens, I say to myself, I should just do like a little bit every single month in terms of like entering stuff into QuickBooks and, um, you know, like logging my mileage and stuff for my business. But do I do it? No. Every year, like the end of January, beginning of February rolls around and Craig's like, hey, where's your stuff? Tax guy wants to get started and I'm just like, oh, I don't have it. <laughs> so then he gets annoyed and then I have to sit for like several days in a row and fish through all my receipts and all of this stuff and just put it all. This is the worst part about owning your own business is like the taxes. The one thing that I miss about just having like a job that you just like go to and you don't own the company is they just give you your paycheck and then you just get your tax paperwork at the end of the year and you just hand that one thing, just that one thing and any, you know, like donations, write-offs, things like that. You just hand that to your tax person. <laughs> but when you have your own business, there's just so much stuff and I hate it. I hate it so much, but it's all part of it, right? So I'm gonna try not to, I'm gonna try not to complain about it. I'm totally complaining about it, but uh, I'm just gonna try to get it done this weekend and just be finished with it. And once again, I am making myself the promise that at the end of each month, I'm gonna go through and do all the things and uh, then I'm not gonna do it. So yeah, that is that is the circle of life for Melanie when it comes to running a floral business. I like to save it all for the end. I am creative. I am not a computer or like paper or numbers oriented person. Like I am very much just like, I can make things very pretty and beautiful. Um, but please don't ask me to like do simple addition and subtraction. <laughs> and also don't keep me like, don't expect me to like keep track of things because I just kind of throw everything in different spots and then I have to like go hunting it. It's a nightmare. Anyway, you guys, let's talk favorites. Um, I hope your tax uh, preparations are going better than mine. Um, let's talk favorites, you guys. We are going to get started with my perfume pick of the week. As always, everything will be listed, linked in the description box down below. I'll try to find any sale prices if they're available. So utilize that description box. It is a very helpful plethora of information. Okay, my perfume this week was a dossier pick. Uh, I am a dossier ambassador, so... They do from time to time send me some fragrances to try, but I also purchased from them myself. And one of the ones that they recently sent me to uh, try out is this powdery orange flower, which is a dupe of the, I'm gonna mess this up, it's a Valentino fragrance. It's called, um, I think it's Voce Viva or Voce Viva, I know. You guys, I I have never taken an Italian class. Uh, I. I'm a native German speaker. I took French for a year in high school and then I took Spanish for three years. So I feel a little more confident with those languages, but Italian is, that's very, yeah, not good with it. But anyway, so this is a dupe for that Valentino fragrance. And I was very curious about this one, especially because around the holidays, like we drew names with my in-laws, uh, the family members on Craig's side. There's just a lot of them. So we draw a name and then we get one person, one really nice gift um, instead of buying a bunch of little things for like everybody. So anyway, I drew my sister-in-law, Heather, and I got her the Sephora sampler. And in there was a Valentino fragrance. I don't think it was this one, but it inspired me to go sniff out the Valentino fragrances. And one of the ones that I really liked when I was doing this at Sephora was this Voce Viva or whatever it's called. I'll put the name of it down below, sorry. Um, I really liked it a lot, but Valentino is not cruelty free. Dossier is cruelty free. So I was super excited to get this one from them. 
The notes in here are mandarin, bergamot, and ginger. The middle notes are orange flower, white florals, and gardenia. These are some beautiful white florals, you guys. And then the base notes are vanilla, tonka bean, and musks. So this kind of combines like two of my favorite things, which are like really nice, beautiful white florals with vanilla, with tonka bean. Tonka bean is kind of like a vanilla, but not sweet. It's very interesting. And I love musky fragrances. You guys, this is beautiful. I feel like it's pretty close to the real thing. I'm trying to like remember back I know that I loved the OG when I was the original fragrance when I was smelling it in Sephora. In fact, I sprayed a couple of their little like, um, you know, those perfume testers, the white little strips of paper. I sprayed a couple of those and popped them in my purse and my purse still smells amazing. Like this is such a nice fragrance. You guys, this is beautiful. I can definitely smell the mandarin in here and that orange flower. It's almost like a like neroli, right? Like that beautiful orange blossom fragrance. It, that is the one thing that stands out to me the most in this fragrance is that particular note. But then those vanilla and tonka bean and musk notes sort of like bring that down a little bit and make it more like sensual and almost, I feel like this is a good evening or date night fragrance. It's just so pretty um, and unique. I really like this a lot. If you like the original Valentino fragrance, <clears throat> but you don't want to blow your budget on that, you should check this out. When you order from Dossier, your, your uh, perfume comes in a box like this. And then they also send you um, a little fragrance card that tells you the concentration of the perfume. It tells you what you can do if you don't like the fragrance. For example, if it doesn't agree with your like body chemistry, that can happen. Some perfumes turn sour on me and that's always a bummer. I usually try to use those fragrances anyway, but I just spray them on my clothing instead of my skin and that way I get like the original fragrance and I don't get that sort of sour note that can sometimes happen. It honestly just depends on your body chemistry, but if you find that something doesn't agree with you, you can send it back, you can exchange it for a different fragrance, you can get your money back. Um, I just really, I love Dossier. I have been a partner with them for well over a year now. I love their fragrances. They are so much less expensive than the original fragrances. And for me personally, the vast majority of the fragrances that I've tried have either the same lasting power as the real thing or they last even longer. So I think the quality of these is fantastic. You are not paying for fancy packaging here. All the perfumes come in this one bottle with a simple white label that gives you the notes, tells you the name, and then it, it does have a really nice cap. It's one of those like magnetic caps, which I really like. And the mist is really nice too. So this is, I think that matters to me. Oh, this is so nice, you guys. I just love this. Anyway. I'll put a link down for Dossier uh, in the description box. Uh, if you've never checked them out, I love them. And I think this particular fragrance is just so, so pretty. This would be a great like spring, summer, evening, date night type fragrance, but I don't know. I wear it during the day too, but I just think that's super lovely. Let's talk some hair. Um, okay. I placed an order at Ulta for several different mousse products because I, I've used up all of the mousses that I had in my backup stash. And being like the 90s girl that I am, like I'm still using mousse and I'm 43. Um, the Paul Mitchell Extra Body Sculpting Foam is one of my longtime favorites, you guys. This is a really great thickening and like botifying mousse. Um, I have this in my hair today. So after I blow dried my hair, I actually put it up in like a bun. Um, so it looks a little funky on the top because when I do that, it does take the body away from like my roots, but it gives me kind of this like cool texture at the ends. So yeah, I got to figure out, I mean, I think I can probably do my like volume rooty thing up here and like boof it back up, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going anywhere today, but if you've never tried this, this is actually, I think, I feel like Paul Mitchell is pretty affordable in terms of like higher end hair care products. I used to covet Paul Mitchell when I was in middle school because all of my girlfriends, like their moms bought them Paul Mitchell Awapui shampoo and conditioner. And I just was like, oh, I wish I could have that. But my parents were like, no. <laughs> 
money was tight when I was growing up. So for me, my mom was like, you can have some VO5 or you can have some Suave. Pick your fragrance. Enjoy. Like, that's the hair care that I got in middle school. So it's kind of fun, like, to be able to use this now and um, think like, oh man, back in middle school, this was just like the height of fancy to me. And now, now I just think it's a really great product. I love this. I've repurchased it multiple times. Um, I just get it in these big cans now. It does come in a smaller one. So the funny thing is, though, every time that I order this from the Ulta website, they never send me the lid. There's no lid. Just came like this. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it wasn't like used at all, obviously, but for some reason, the lid, not there. Still a great product. If you purchase it in store, you can usually find it with the lid. <laughs> okay, let's do, um, let's do some skincare, guys. I've been testing a brand new makeup melting cleansing balm, and this is from Wander Beauty. Okay, so this is their one of their latest releases, and it is a cleansing balm. The one thing that I would give feedback onto them is I kind of wish this was in a tub because it's a little bit hard to get out. It's a very it's one of those like super thick cleansing balms, but it's great because it like it really does like melt into your skin, and you can just feel it like melting all the makeup, melting all of like the mascara off. And it just does it really quickly. Um, this doesn't, this doesn't really have a fragrance to me at all. So if you are someone who doesn't like fragrance in your products, this is probably going to be a, a good one for you to try, but it literally just dissolves everything. So this has a hobo seed oil and evening primrose oil. It's just really hydrating. I find that like products that contain a lot of oils in them when it comes to first cleanses are really super gentle on the lash line. And I don't deal with like, it doesn't make my eyes bleary or anything like that. Some, some of my favorite makeup melting products for the first cleanse can make my eyes a little bit sort of cloudy for a few minutes after, you know, working around the eye area, but this one did not at all. And it just turns into like this kind of nice milky consistency when you add a little bit of water and go to rinse it off. It's glorious. If you are into trying new like makeup melting balms, put this one on your list to try. I really like this a lot. I see myself totally repurchasing this. This is a great product for sure. Um, I, wow, that's a long hair. <clears throat> By the way, you guys, I scheduled a haircut for the last week of the month. Uh, I got to take a couple inches off of this thing. It's kind of, it's kind of starting to get a little out of control for my liking. So I'm going to take a couple inches off, redo the curtain bangs and try styling my hair again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's coming down the pipeline. I I have been using this now for several weeks, and it is the Isn't Tree Green Tea Fresh Serum. You guys know how I feel about the green tea toner and their moisturizer. Fabulous. If you've never tried them, you should. But this is one of their newer products in this line, and oh man, you guys, I love this. Guys, that is enough. Sorry, they're chewing on their bully sticks in here, which is great because I can keep an eye on them, but it's really loud. I hope you guys can't hear it. It's kind of a gross sound. Um, but yeah, so this is their, uh, they say this is a serum containing 70% of Jeju green tea extract, um, which helps to regulate excess sebum production while providing deep hydration to the skin. So let me tell you why I bought this. Um, originally, I bought this because a lot of you know that I love the Maysama Green Rooibos Press Serum. Love it, will love it, will repurchase it for as long as Bev keeps making it. I love her serum. But it is on the higher end price range, and I know a lot of you are on a tighter budget, and I really recommend using a green tea serum when you are doing red light therapy. It helps to sort of neutralize those free radicals that can happen when you're using your LED light, um, which can then help you see faster results in terms of the anti-aging benefits from your red light therapy. So I think it's a really good thing to add in. By the way, you need to put this on about a half hour before you do your red light therapy, so don't put it on and then immediately go sit in front of your light. Give it some time to really soak into your skin. But I've been using this not only with my red light therapy every time that I do it, but I've also been using it every single morning. This has been a part of my morning skincare routine. It is 
heavenly, you guys. It just, it hydrates the skin. I do think it actually helps to control some of that excess oil that comes through. But I think the biggest thing is that it hydrates in a really lightweight manner. This is just a beautiful texture. So comes in a dropper format. Um, it has that nice sort of green tea tint to it. I love that. <laughs> and there's like no, virtually no fragrance. It absorbs instantly into your skin and it, it leaves it hydrated and soft, um, but not greasy. It is, it is not greasy at all. It's almost like a, like a thicker, like watery type texture because once it soaks in you really don't feel anything except softness on the skin like you don't feel product it just goes in it's glorious i do want to use it for just a couple more weeks before i do an in-depth review but yeah i'm going to be talking about this and i'll just kind of talk about the green tea line in general from isn't tree because i think it's a fantastic line um and i bought this off of amazon and it's i oh how much did i pay for this 20 something dollars at the most so, sorry, who is, who is doing that? Penny, stop. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is, it is definitely less expensive than the Maysama. So if you are on a tighter budget, this might be a really great option for you. So I'll link this down below. By the way, I do have a special code for Paula's Choice, the website right now. Um, I, uh, I joined a new like linking platform called Narrative and they send out a ton of coupon codes to be able to pass along to people. So this is just a coupon code that's exclusive to Narrative. So I'll put the information down below, but it's for 20% off on the Polish Choice website. It's good on everything. I don't think the sale is going on too much longer. So if you want something, I would order soon. I'll put the link uh, to to the website, obviously, down below, and then the discount code as well. Um, but obviously, two of my like longtime faves are the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. Um, yeah, if you deal with blackheads or sebaceous filaments, you need this in your life. And you guys know how I feel about the 20% niacinamide. Holy grail. So improved the look of my pores to the point where I, I really like the way my pores look. They're still there. Like, yeah, I have pores. They're never gonna go away but they just look so much better. And then this keeps my pores clear. Like I just don't really deal with a whole lot of sebaceous filaments anymore from using this on a very regular basis. So I like, oh God, she's putting it on my foot. It's so gross. Stop doing that. Um, all right, let's talk some makeup items really quickly. <sighs> mm, I love this, you guys. I love this primer. This is the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. Get out of town, this is so fantastic. Look how much, I, I can't stop using it and I'm already down to here. And am I gonna repurchase it the second that I finish it? Yes, yes I will. I don't care if I can't get it onto, hold please. Penny, girls, take, take it out. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, this is so good, you guys. I did a wear test with this earlier in the week. If you missed it, I'll link it down below. You can see what it looks like on my skin right after I put it on. Um, you can see it halfway through the day and you can see it at the end of the day. It's, oh. This makes my makeup last so much longer into the day before having to blot. And it blurs the look of my pores to the point where my skin just looks so smooth and beautiful. I love, I love this. It looks great in pictures too. So I know it's really expensive. I know, but you know what? It works. So this is like, this is now just a part of my morning skincare routine almost. I put this on like right after I do my skincare routine, um, but before I put on my SPF. So that is the order for me. Um, SPF is always the last thing that I put on my skin before I go in with my makeup. And I do sort of try to let everything sit for at least 10 minutes so that the SPF really has a chance to like set into my skin so that I'm not moving it around with my brushes or anything like that. But you guys, this primer, it's a holy grail. Um, yeah, I also like the pump on it. It has a really nice pump. So Hourglass, this is a winner for sure. Their Veil Mineral Primer was okay for me. This, this is a rock star. It's so good. I just cannot say enough good stuff about it. My eyeshadow palette this week, I've just been wearing this for like actually quite some time. I really like this palette. It's That's Taupe from ColourPop. I did a Chichak Get Ready With Me and this is the palette that I used for that. It's, 
you know, the quality is not like super fantastic, but it's really good for what it is. And I use an eye primer anyway, so the wear is pretty decent. I do notice quite a bit of fading by the end of the day, but I mean, this would be great to take with you if you are traveling. Like it's an inexpensive palette that if something happens to it, like you won't be crushed. Like if I took my Viseart palette, my Grand Pro, and I lost it, I would be so sad. I would purchase it right away, but I would be really bummed. This I wouldn't be like terribly upset about losing, and I'd probably actually repurchase this too. This is a great palette to have. So um, if you've never checked out That's Taupe, it's got some really nice neutral, slightly more cool tone shades. Um, yeah, they're just so gorgeous. These shimmers, I don't love as much as the mattes, but these mattes that are in here are absolutely delightful. Yeah, the shimmer is a little more chunky than I would prefer, but still, like, again, if you're just, like, pressing them into your lid on top of a primer, they do pretty well. So, yeah, this is great for, like, what, 15 bucks? Are these 15 bucks? I think somewhere around there. So, totally worth checking out. If this isn't your color story, um, if this isn't something that you gravitate towards, they have lots of different palettes with, you know, like, roses, blues, greens, all sorts of stuff. So, but anyway, this is nice. Um, I do have a little bit of a flop and it's not like a complete flop and I feel like most of the mascaras that came in this like mascara sampler thing for me have been like yeah yeah they're okay not like something that I would purchase um, I did end up getting the Kush mascara I, I love this I've actually purchased this before anyway so I thought this is what I would use that like full-sized coupon for. Um, so the Kush Mascara is what I bought. I haven't opened this because I still have all these like samples that I'm using. But the Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Makeup, I really thought I would like this, but it, it got a little flaky on me. Um, not until the latter part of the day, but she got a little flaky on me, which surprised me. Um, so that was a bummer. I'm glad that I didn't pick this one up because I, I do not like flaking mascara. That's... Ooh. It's kind of a big no-no for me. So I'll probably still like finish using this because it does give me, I'm wearing it right now. It gives me really nice voluminous lashes, but, um, and they're separated and they're not too chunky, but the problem is that like, even though there's no smudging or transferring around like four or five in the afternoon, I do start to notice some flaking underneath. And that is always annoying. Cause like if you wipe it away too aggressively, then you're left with like a streak. And I don't know, I don't love that. But yeah, I'm surprised that she would make a flaky mascara. I didn't expect that from Pat. So, but you know, whatever. I mean, if I'm not going anywhere in the evening, it's fine, I'll finish using it. I mean. I paid for it so I might as well use it but yeah you guys that's what I have for you today so thanks so much for tuning in I hope you have a fantastic weekend let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below uh, let me know what you are loving this past week give this video a thumbs up please subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one take care Toodaloo.